Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Productions channel here at YouTube and welcome to another Album of the Week video. This is episode number 213. Today's episode is more of a glorified recommendation. It's Don't Spare the Wicked, the debut album from Whittier, California-based Majestic Shredding Heavy Metal of Fortress. Released back on November 26 of 2021 via High Roller Records. So with all that said, let's begin. Just like the band on my previous album review, I also caught these guys live at Frozen in Time Fest. However, unlike Blind Oath, I was already familiar with Fortress. These guys made a splash in 2018 with their debut EP, which would eventually get reissued by High Roller Records in 2019. I never quite jumped onto these guys till now. After being very impressed with their performance and just indulging myself to their album, I have kind of began kicking myself for not jumping onto these guys much sooner. So, after the release of their four-track EP, bass player Ulysses Serrano, hope I pronounced all that correct, would leave the band to then be replaced by Damien Rohan, Rijon, I don't know, it's probably a pronounced that way, uh, always don't let me know what it's, what is the best way to pronounce Damien's last name, so I guess uh, just to make it easier for me, I'll just refer to him as Damien. And with this, Philly Bibiano would then concentrate on writing material for what would become their debut full length here. And from what I gathered here before doing it is that prior to their full length, starting with the EP, original bass player Ulysses Serrano had quite a bit to do with the writing. But once he left, Philly pretty much took over the majority of creating the riffs and solos, while singer Chris Nunez would come up with writing the lyrics. And so, beginning with their full length here, Fortress has become full-on Philly's vision of what he wants to create. The recording process for this had to have taken place sometime in either late 2020 or early to mid-2021. With the bulk of the recording taking place at DLR Studios, which I guess is in Gardena, north of Los Angeles, I'm from Fresno. I should already know this shit by now. <laughs> uh, speaking of my home city of Fresno, this now takes me to where the drum tracks were recorded at, which the drums were recorded at Trevor William Church's church recordings, which explains why they were booked at Frozen and Time Fest in the first place. So, by the end of things, High Roller Records would release their debut album like their EP, Don't Spare the Wicked, on November 26, 2021. So, featuring 8 tracks, clocking in at the length of 28 minutes and 40 seconds, these 8 tracks are of course beginning with Lost Forever, Devil's Wheel, Anguish, Red Light Runner, Find Yourself, Children of the Night, the somewhat over three minute instrumental, The Passage, and then finally ending with the title track. So there you go, folks. There's your eight tracks. So with this album being more closer to Philly's vision, it really shows. It's more focused on being more majestic. It's more melodic, more emphasis on Philly's chops, adding in keyboards, that are more used for atmosphere rather than being a focal point of the album. And the keys adds a lot 
to some of these crushing songs. And of course, Chris Nunez's wide yet smooth vocals that more remind me of talents like Graham Bonnet and Jeff Tate. Now, Philly's style does at times remind me of the legendary Richie Blackmore. He also shows remnants of guys like Ingve Malmsteen, Michael Schenker, and Uli John Roth, just to name a few. But it was listening to this album is where it hit me. Because of the fact that Philly Bibiano has that combination of Blackmore and Malmsteen, meaning in that he can shred like Malmsteen, but lays it back and by that, ends up focusing more on the Blackmore side of things where he just focuses playing more soulful, allowing the notes to sit there and, and be able to feel more emotion to, to the notes. Which is where the music here elevates his style here. To me, this is the kind of album that would have felt at home with Shrapnel Records back in its glory days. The thing is, I can't get enough of this album. I know some folks have dogged on the length of the album, but I kind of find it refreshing that it's sort of short. It's not like there is never any room for the songs to breathe. If anything, it allows the band to get in and say what they have to say and then get out before anything becomes to get old. Because when it comes to albums that are guitar slash shred based, that are tacked at over 30 to 40 minutes, and because of the songs, for the most part, are so built around their shredding guitarist, that they focus more on that aspect than using that room to create an atmosphere that works for the song than just being, look, hear me, I'm a shredder, I'm fucking great. Of course, that doesn't completely go for guys like Chat, you know, David T. Chastain, which is not the case here. It's why I find this to be pretty refreshing. The songs are songs, and the solos are kept at a minimal, but yet are still tasty enough for me to fully appreciate Philly's chops as a player, instead of being overly self-indulgent. It's kind of like Ingve. If he kept the way he played, all like what on the first Alcatraz album, No Parole from Rock and Roll. But the songs kick ass nonetheless. I can't get enough of songs like Devil's Wheel, the very rainbowish speedy rocker Red Light Runner, Find Yourself, which is so infectious, especially the solo section, which is very cool, in that Ronnie Montrose meets Michael Schenker feel of playing. The groovy paced Children of the Night which has me reminded of Vicious Rumor's debut album period. And then of course, there is the double header, The Passage slash title track. The Passage is a guitar piece that Philly had come up with prior to Fortress that he finally was able to piece together in development for this album. If I have to nitpick, is that 30 minutes and 30 seconds kind of pushes this to being, well, overstating its welcome on the album. If he had sort of shortened this piece, then maybe it would have made it more impactful. But still, I get what he was going for. It has a cool atmosphere to it that works great as a lead-in into the title track, which ends the album on a blistering note. This song absolutely crushes probably the heaviest song on the album. From the sense to the solos, to Nunez's vocals, it's majestic. This is what 1980s US power metal was all about. This whole album is a wall-to-wall -wall banger. What they managed to get right is what many would have failed in if this was made to be done back in the 80s. It's a great debut full length that is filled with plenty of tasty leads and keyboard synths, hooky choruses, huge heavy riffs, great vocals, and all around great writing and craftsmanship. This is my kind of neoclassical bass shreddy like heavy metal. The way that I can summon this up is by calling this the best shrapnel release that was never released on shrapnel in 1986. This has been given the NMP seal of recommendations. So with that, this is Heavy Thrasher saying, I am out, and I'll see you all later.
Take care, everyone, and I hope all of you had a great 4th of July this past weekend, whatever, this past week. I hope all of you did. All right. Take care.